Hey guys, Greg Beast here. This week's Beast Lab is going to be focused on forearm strength. So I've been getting a lot of questions about forearm training, uh, arm training. I've gotten it for years. Uh, I want you guys to more understand how this all works rather than me just give you a workout, bro. I want you guys to understand the function and anatomy of our arms and forearms and why what I'm going to tell you is going to work. So for years and years and years, uh, since I was in high school, I have done, I have train my forearms without really knowing it. Um, and what I mean by that is, I think the common misconception is that to get big forearms, we got to put like, you know, do some kind of just flexion exercise over and over again, uh, which, you know, if you're a layman or you don't understand this stuff, I guess would be, would make sense, right? Just flex this muscle a lot, use a machine or use dumbbells and just sit here and do that. But we got to think about the entire anatomy of the arm, right? That would be like thinking that in order to have big quads, uh, or in order to have bigger legs in general, I should just focus on quads and just do quad extension. That's not going to get the entirety of my leg bigger, right? Or stronger. I have hamstrings, I have glutes, I have adductors and abductors. Um, so you, you have to look at the entire circumference of the, of the arm and how you can make it stronger in general. So for instance, everything that your arms and fingers can do, they can obviously do it because there's muscles that allow that, right? So let's look at it from the top to the bottom here. I have elbow flexion, right? Bring the curls coming up. I also have elbow extension, which is, you know, generally your main mover is your triceps. Okay. Those are biceps, obviously bicep, two muscles, triceps, that's three muscles. Okay. So there's multiple muscles right there, just on the flexion and extension. Now you don't just have flexion and extension. You also have pronation and supination right here of the wrist. And if you sit there and tuck your elbows in and pronate and supinate, you'll start to feel burn. And that burn will go on an oblique across your uh, forearm on both sides. Okay. Now look at, let's look at our wrist. So everything your wrist can do, you have wrist flexion, you have wrist extension, and then our hands, right? We have opposition, we have dexterity here. So you have your hands have a flexion and extension as well as so do your fingers, flexion and extension. So there's a front and back side to all these muscles. For every motion, there's an antagonistic motion. So just sitting here and thinking that this is going to strengthen your forearms and make them bigger and stronger, actually what you're going to do is you're going to severely increase the, your, your, your uh, ability to get wrist injuries, okay? Because you're creating a superior imbalance here. We need something on the backside as well, right? So no one should just sit here and curl their wrist. That's crazy. So what we want to do is we want to work the entire thing, all right? So there's a couple ways to do this. And the, the number one thing, honestly, pick up heavy stuff. So if anyone's ever seen the videos of me uh, doing deadlifts or doing farmer carries or cleans or snatches or overhead press, you will never see me wearing wrist wraps that wrap around the bar and aid me in my lift. What's that doing? That's just taking away from my grip strength, right? Now, I'm not saying anything against people who use that. Great for you. Uh, but anybody who knows me knows that my philosophy has always been the same. Lift raw. No belt. No straps. If you want to do a wrist brace, great. Okay, that keeps your wrist healthy. Uh, but nothing that's going to aid you lifting stuff up because all that's doing is taking away from the muscle that's supposed to be trained. So unless you're a, a power lifter in a meet going for a PR, I don't see any reason, especially as an athlete, like a lacrosse player, for us to ever wear belts or, or wrist wraps that are going to aid in our ability to get the bar off the ground or do anything because we're limiting our ability to strengthen our core and strengthen our forms. So... Number one, lift heavy stuff, raw, deadlifts, all that stuff. Pick the bar up off the ground, squeeze it tight. If you have to do a, 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 a mixed grip, you can go mixed grip right here. That aids in your strength as well. You can also go with a hook grip that we use when we do Olympic lifts, hooking the thumb around the bar, hold the bar. All that stuff still trains the forearms at a maximal capacity. Now, one of the simple things that I have done for years since high school, and one thing that I think you should all do, uh, is use something that's going to make your grip wider. So for instance, let's do this together. When you're watching this video, just squeeze your hands as tight as you can. Make the tightest fist possible. Okay, just focus on the hand squeezing. Now, you're going to feel strength here, right? You're also going to feel this muscle start to be tense up here. It's going to start to dissipate a little bit. Not too much on the back side, right? We're going to have some of this extension, uh, extensing muscles that are going to be a little bit tight. Now, I want you to take that hand. I want you to grab your other forearm and I want you to squeeze as tight as you can. And you're going to see a lot more stress go down the back of your forearm, especially up here, and then down on the extension part of the forearm. 
and you're gonna feel that it's a lot harder to squeeze something that's fatter. So what do we learn from that? When I was at Penn State, the head strength coach, uh, Brad Pantall was the basketball strength coach. He modded everything in the weight room to have a fatter grip. Because he knew for basketball players, forearm, hand strength, that's all very important. So what I've been using for years, these are called fat grips, okay? Um, G-R-I-P-Z at the end. Uh, I do like 40 bucks for a pair. They go around everything. I have this in my gym bag all the time. And what they do is they basically mod every piece of equipment for you. So if you're doing pull-ups, try to do a set of 10 pull-ups, not the kipping ones, but the real ones, okay? Put uh, fat grips on the bar, go overhand grip, pronated grip, and pull straight down and hold this with a fat grip. Do a set of 10 and try not to tell me that it's 10 times harder, okay? So the other thing is you can do a dumbbell row, one-handed, put this around the dumbbell, pull it up, you're gonna start to feel your forearms screaming. If you're gonna do farmer carries, grab it two heavy dumbbells, Put these around both of them, walk around the gym, okay? Also on your deadlift, if you wanna do a lighter deadlift day, you know, if you can do a 400 pound deadlift, maybe cut it to 200, try these, and your forearms will be screaming. Okay, an easy fix, uh, an inexpensive way to mod the entire gym for you. Um, and then also, let's go over some of the exercises. So if I were to do a hierarchy, and my goal was to get stronger upper body, but I simply wanted to make sure that I had a much larger focus on my forearms, I would do a four to six week program and all I would do is mod with the fat grips. So for instance, start with dumbbell bench, okay, mod those. Then I would go to a pull up, okay. Then I would go to a bent over row, one handed with a high elbow, okay, each side. Then do a vertical press, so sit down, do a vertical press overhead, holding the fat grips, okay, and then finish it with a farmer carry. Grab the farmer carry, go over, okay, until they're crying, put it down, and then when you're absolutely fried, grab like 15 or 20 pound dumbbells, put this around there, tuck the elbows in, and supinate and pronate back and forth for 10 to 12 reps. See if you can do three sets of that to finish off. Your forearms are gonna be screaming for days, okay? That's a very simple way to make sure that you're getting a lot of forearm training, but you're not doing something that is uh, not practical, or is a waste of time, okay? This is completely inefficient to sit there and do concentrated wrist curls. If you have that much time in the gym, then you are wasting, then you have too much time on your hands, okay? I would rather you go play Fortnite than waste 25 minutes doing this, okay? So make sure you guys pick up a pair of these. Go to uh, uh, gripstrength.com or fatgrips.com, okay? Take a look at what they offer. I think it's like $40, like I said, for a pair. And you guys can mod your entire workout. Try these for four to six weeks. Then I want you to post a video and I want you to tag me in it. Tell me what you think of these. I guarantee you every single guy who takes lifting seriously will say they have a very positive experience from these. And I guarantee your forearm strength will go through the roof. Now, when it comes to face-offs, obviously forearm strength is important. Mostly for injury prevention, okay? Nobody at an elite level sits there and rolls their wrists like this on a face-off, right? The ball is all the way high up here. You're just pushing the weak part of the plastic over top of the ball. But in order to make sure these muscles are thicker and stronger so that we can keep the, the tension off this wrist, when we have it wrapped up and we're driving in forearm strength, especially on this extension portion, is really important. Okay, It helps you st to stay strong, but also st helps you to stave off injury. Um, and then when you're training forearms the correct way, uh, without straps, you're doing your total body exercises with the fat grips, now you're not just getting the benefit of here, but you're getting the benefit all the way up through the shoulder joint of stronger, thicker muscles in general. So when you do punch on that 50-50, as long as you're angled towards the ball and you're driving in, you'll be able to tuck your weight down very effortlessly to saw down and exit. So forearm strength is important, but what the fat grips does is it makes sure that we're not just wasting time hurting our wrists. We're training both sides, flexion and extension. Okay, the rotation and the fingers. So now everything as a whole is stronger as a unit rather than one overly developed tight wrist right here that's gonna to lead to injury, okay? So grab the fat grips four to six weeks from now. 